Slard our sprint and blink dagger. Hopefully he is able to farm it for their sake. You got Slard very elusive at the bat, and once he gets ult, not a great target to go on. And Marana has two escapes of her own, so at the very least they're not particularly easy to punish. But that said, this last track might have a run. Yeah, there's not a whole da- yeah, there's not a whole lot of lockdown on EG, but it's it's gonna be like this. It's like the Spirit Breaker is able to really he's able to catch pretty easily versus the Slark and the Marana. It's a really good Spirit Breaker game too. Like, what reliable ways do you have to actually cancel a charge here? And oh, it's it is it's a core Abaddon. So it's a core Slardar. Yeah, I actually thought it was gonna be the core Slardar and the support Abaddon in the lane, but okay. So they're going for this. And they have a lot of, they're going to want to just get a lot of levels on the Abaddon so we can at least heal off the damage and everything and maybe give them a bit more push potential if he goes for the Curse of Avernus. Is it missing? I think mine's there. Is it? Mine's there. Yours is there, but mine's not. You Let's see, does stream have game sound? I guess that's the better now. Yeah, that's probably the more important thing. Guys, just yell at us. If just yell at us if you don't have game sound. So. Yeah. Should be just fine, but... Flex is going to start things off here with the 5 hero smoke. Boots on the slaughter. Are going to be revealed now, Arteezy. Zai and Arteezy both in out. position to kind of scout that out. Seconds to battle. Too busy talking about me all tabbing, but that should tell me if sound. So, they do get down a hill ward uh, in the mid lane. So they'll be able to, obviously versus the Marana, having that, that ward is very important. The arrows, and I guess it is going to be a core Marana, so a little bit less likely to cheat. Directly tanking it. No sound. No sound. They know it because I asked them. I'm not sure if they're trolling. Good. They might be trolling. Mistakes are made. Yeah. Heavy contestant up to the top lane. EG's gone position. They have the double ion shell, so they're really. Oh my god, Cancel almost just straight dies to the auto attacks. Playing the bounty. That ion shell, though, does a lot of work, but no bounty run at level 1 for Sumail, so. Worth, worth it. Definitely worth the cost, though. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is still. This is still a tough matchup for the Marana, in my opinion. Alchemist is just able to, like, free farm. Like, that's just what the Alchemist does. He obviously just throws Asses right down, he gets his Grievous Raid, gets the 4-man shield. Once 4-man shield's up, it's it's pretty much impossible for the Marana to harass him out of lane. Especially since we'll, we'll probably be see the Wisp, like, running around between, like, the mid and mid and uh, bottom lane. Just able to heal up stack as much as possible. Probably we see Zai not starting top, though. Uh, go for a TP back here in Universe, just to the Tier 1. He rotates the jungle early. I'm going to be running the Crit Arteezy dual lane, so but I'll also quite likely to move around depending on where he's needed, but for now, Sumail with the, the early stout should call him late. It's Marana. Should, be, should do pretty well as far as the point goes, but this is a 1v1. Yeah, I can't still like, 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 he got super harassed at the bottom lane. Oh my god, we're getting some pressure, but shields off the other see a bash? Bash? Bash. Yeah, he has the oop, though. Like, if they get a bash into the tether slow with the oop, I think that's quite likely a kill. At this stage. Yeah, I, I actually expected both teams to kind of do like the dual off lanes, like the Spirit Breaker starting in top and the uh, Slaughter starting bottom, but the one beauty is that Dark Seer can jungle much easier than the Abaddon, so I think I guess that's EG's thought process is, you know, doing three heroes bottom, zone the Abaddon as much as possible, and he's kind of just stuck in this weird position where he can't, he can't go anywhere. And along with that, uh, I think just an adjustment to the fact that I'm not playing a bad in general. Mm -hmm. because... Perhaps not initially expecting it, but certainly ready for it. We, we did see Bulba do this a lot. Is he free Kong for Courier Snipe? Yeah, he's gonna get it. He's <laughs> gonna get it here. He gives up the Slardar. What do you even call this thing? Smack. Tentacle what Smack. What the hell is that? Got a fish head. It's a grasping bludgeon. <laughs> I think it actually fights its prey. It has like a mind of its own. Well, continue to pressure monkeys, and he is running pretty low mana, but so far getting his levels. He's doing alright, all things considered. Universe, though, definitely getting the upper hand here as far as the experience goes. Roll the TP out. Are they back? And again, this is just a weakness of the complexity draft. They don't have anyone that really deals particularly well with the Dark Seer as far as like a safe lane farmer goes. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still hard for him to really lane up there. Like, he gets hit by pretty much one stun, one leash from the pounce. He's he's kind of screwed, but yeah, he's just jungling. You know, that's just what the hero. That's the beauty of having that hero wall. Abaddon can't, like, he can't really do that unless he goes straight Iron Talon like first item. If you do that, then you're going to be greedy in the jungle with their support. Yeah, exactly. And they can just have free movement. But yeah, mid lane already. Sumail pulling pulling. Pretty far ahead, 15 and 2 to the 8 0 Marana. Sumail having a good time here, cancelled. Definitely struggling a bit. What for the Bassy build? What should Envy doing? 
I guess it's gaining a little more popularity with other players, but still mostly an envy special. We are going to rotate Z Freak down bottom, but so far he's been very ineffective in the early roaming. Hasn't been able to set anything up and... Got the courier at least though. That's kind of big. That's true. That's he, did get, he did get the courier, but not really putting pressure on these lanes. You can see Anthony yeah. farming very well as a result. Yeah, it's a support slider. Like, what are you really going to do? Exactly. He definitely recognized that, you know, he, he needs to help out his buddy bottom. Cancel. Get the charge up mid. They, they see it though, so he throws the arrow down in the end. His eye stops the charge. If you see the charge, I guess the arrow is still an okay way to... Depending on the end. I still threatening to come in. We'll settle down a little bit for now. Z3 trying to cut Zai off. Actually, doesn't have the mana, but does have stick charger, so it can charge out of here. If need be. They've only got one way to interrupt it. Not quite enough mana for the arrow, but they're gonna have to combo to rush into an arrow available. Got it. What's the arrow? arrow? Oh, and oh, Zai's late. I'm just kidding. But and it's an axe and, and this might be a first blood, but oh, it's right there. On the high ground. The crush comes in again, not gonna matter. Cancel, leaping forward towards the eye. What's the crit kill? He will get it. He could get Zai as well. It might be a double. How many batches will Zai get? He's gonna need like two or three at least. He gets one, then the charge. One more should do the trick. It's gonna be close. He doesn't get it. Cancel will survive and gets away. He's even there to help monkeys out though. Arteezy sidestepping the arrow as well. Chase monkeys a bit further. RNG rune right there. Uh, that was a game saver. Definitely was. I mean, he's, he's suffering quite heavily in the laning phase, but getting that rune gets picking pick himself two kills up. That's you know that's that's one way to make your slaughter like a bit relevant in the laning phase. Even though he dies, he does pick up your you know two kills for his mid laner. Definitely important. And they really needed that because cancel 14 CS to the 27 of Sumail, and it's not like Sumail's got all that much help yet. Yeah, in the lanes. So that that was a the South's still a concern, but at least Marana being relevant as far as my work. Yeah. yeah, the support's now complexity making the move, so this is universe's time to shine, making the move towards the top lane. So ready level five. Early point in vacuum. Interesting. Not level three, uh, Iron So maybe he used the vacuum to stack a camp or pull it or whatnot with that. But yeah, uh, also to note out, Complexity was stacking a bunch in the jungle, so they do have a big triple stack up at that hard camp for Moon to accelerate his farm once he gets to that point. Yeah, it's definitely something that Slark can take advantage of. Um, let's go for the Iron Talon. He's gonna make the move turn die. He charges on some swindles, but that's also directly into the Diabolic Eating. He's pay for that. He's caught between a uh, rock and a hard place there with the Marana. Try a fencer move, but... Complexity showing a lot of aggression and now going to begin trialing it. They've dropped the lane where they don't want this out to free farm. Could be setting up for a dive, though he has chemical rage available. Six with a raindrop, that's a pretty tough kill. They, they recalibrate seeing that he does have level 6 now. Definitely a lot of emphasis though, as you mentioned, on that mid lane. Putting one mid lane forward and one even behind the tower bottom lane. Levels forever, uh, it's going to be his no TP. Already shielded before the Oko wound, so that's not even counting for the charge. But they could move in and catch crit. A crush here will be his death. Most likely Swindle's coming in, follow up stun available, gets the kill, now needs to run away, nor it's easy. Oko wound for some time, but has the phase to an advantage. Swindle's running in, and it's deep. My chat to save it. They won't even be able to move back in on the Zai if he's not careful. A crush here. Said something like Swindle's a bit too low, and this time they know Oko wound is ready. Would be a death. The ball is right, so not very good. Nice aggression though. They're definitely trying to make the moves as much as possible. They know this is this is kind of the way you have to play versus an alchemist. You know you can't really get involved early on, so you just put as much aggressive movement as possible. And they're they're very like, smart with their warding too. They even put another one bottom lane. So yeah, just heavy amounts of aggression from them, keeping an eye on what's going on from EG. They even spot out this humongous four stack that EG was bringing up with the wisp in the bottom lane. And they even uh they. He puts down a uh, river ward, and it's actually already instantly countered by the sentry. Well, they, it's it's there, but they haven't killed it just yet. Yeah, unfortunately, Z Freak already planted it. I'm sure he's even going to notice. Kind of busy pressuring Sumail, who has about a thousand gold, closing in on that armlet. So overall, Yanis, with the, the back and forth of the lane stage, you have a free farm slark on one side, three cores doing really well on the other, kill advantage for complexity. Uh, it is a slight lead for EG, but like overall, um, as far as gold goes at least, uh, overall are you happy here with the start complex pad if you're on their side, or do you feel like they have to get more done against the cell? I think they're doing an okay job. The biggest concern for me is the Sabaton. He's only level 4 in this bottom lane. Oh, he's just at level 5 now, so uh, I think he's struggling just a bit too much. They want to have him in a better position. And Z-Freak now, trying, dying, might be just dying to the two supports. Universe surging in as well. Classic neutral deny. There is no vision. Z-Freak might just build a TP away. Universe with that one point in vacuum. 
could be the hero, but he guesses wrong. And Z Freak. Flam gets away. Meanwhile, Swindle's moving up to Sumail. This is an ambitious fight, for sure. Yeah, well, wants to force up the Chemical Rage, I suppose, but Zai also gonna make his move and Swindle's with the haste in there. Very away. That's one fast disco boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one the Madden, like you said, is not getting a hold. The one thing I thought Mu would actually do is, uh, you know, go for that rush Shadow Blade. Obviously, like, getting it first is the obvious thing that he's gonna do, but he's picking up a lot of small items. Finishes up his treads, obviously finishes up the Iron Talon, pretty sure that one's just core. But even finishing up the Ring of Aquila, and now he's bringing out a Magic Wand on top of it. So, he's not gonna have that, like, 12-minute Shadow Blade to be able to pressure that early. He's going for, like, just maybe one or too many small items, but he does have the farm, the stack to at least accelerate his farm a bit and then be able to get involved with it. I mean, you look at the rest of the lineup, Fighting early feels natural, right? You've got Slardar, Nevadin, Marana. These are all heroes that can get involved, even less racket support that needs to. But he really is their only late game. As a, I mean, Marana is okay, but not great at killing single targets. And you have an Alchemist and a Life Stealer with Rage, who has a lot of ways to deal with magic damage. So it's going to be Slark who deals with those heroes later on. Obviously, not rushing a big item just put a bit of more of a ceiling on his late game. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not it's not terrible for Paul, though, because also the, the Wisp and the Spirit Breaker are super under level. The Spirit Breaker is only level 3. Wisp is level 4, not even close to 5, or kind of close to 5. It's, you know, like, missing points of experience, but... Black City, trying to put some pressure on RTZ here, but that's a very rough, that's a very tough kill. They have to land a crush into an arrow. But yeah, this, the thing that opens up, those for them to steal the stack. This is a, this is a huge move for Black City here, for sure. Wow. They're gonna find it now with the shield of the monkeys. Level 6 secure. Getting so much need experience, also Z Freak on the Slardar was only level 4 at 10 minutes coming in, that's quite low for him. Mu getting pressured really heavy right now. He gets the TP, but he gets vacuum. Uh oh, that one point in vacuum could be a downfall, but now also the Moonlight Shadow and EG still not carrying detection. Twice in a row now, they've been hoodwinked by the Murano cancel, and I, I, if this happens a third time, I'm pretty sure it's a roll. Yeah, that's, that's actually huge. Like, they committed a lot to try to get him there, but the one thing they do get out of it is, you know, this is a smart move, very smart move by RTZ. They can see all the pressure coming down in the bottom lane, and this is just like, this is standard now, pretty much, for the majority of teams, is my safe lane's getting pressured, I'm out. I'm going to your safe lane. Used to be people would try to defend it, but not not the case anymore. It's kind of just like, uh, like defending that, that tower, you know, defending the safe lane tier 1 is just like, it's a pinch of trap. There's too many entrances to be able to, like, contest with that. You have to pretty much have your entire team there to defend it. They don't want... Right, they don't want Sumail to get involved. Like he's just farming. He, all he needs to do is really just get that that rigging sunlight. He's got his armlet. He's having a great time already. Yeah, 2600 net worth sitting at, or uh, sorry, 2600 uh, gold bank sitting at 7300 net worth. That'd be pretty bad if you're mid out this point. They are now gonna move towards Sumail. He has chemical rage online. They're scouting him out. They're gonna move on to wall of chemical rage. Oh, Stone will come through from Swindles, they're gonna chain this with an arrow, not even close to scratching that out. And now they just want to get the hell away. Monkey's preferred position, he can throw the shield, they can re-engage on squishier supports, but even Universe arriving, so four heroes to the lane, and not there. There's Arteezy, just relaxing in the top lane, has his own armlet completed. Mu will just be duking out for a while. Really want to apply the pressure here in the mid lane, though. This tower is about to be in deny range now, as Cancel continues chipping away. Arrow having a fish, Zai can get crushed now. Last hit though, not happening as the glyph gets popped. Crit trying to deny this tower. In the meantime, they're farming ancient. Zai gets hit by the double star score. Might end up going down. Indeed, he will. Cancel fight the kill. The tower is unite by Crit, but was it worth it? Crit, he might die too. Where's RTZ? He's still farming the top lane. Now the tether out. Crit being pursued though. Angry fish on the case. And in a lot of trouble, surged away by Universe, but getting body blocked at the same time. Sprint has worn off. Looks like he should make it out. Even Dolby Arrow pierces through the heart of the ball of life. Great snipe there by Cancel, and only now does Arteezy arrive, and it's to the bottom lane where he'll make short work of Swift. Yeesh! Uh -oh, Alright. Cancel's in some trouble right now. He does have the Moonlight Shadow, but he's charged up right now. Do they have the dust? They do this time. Yeah, the third time will not be the charm. Okay, they got good mileage on the first two, and so it's still a bit of a support tax even when they, they do active. Very keen on keeping the aggression up, though. It's, it's, it's starting to work out a bit. Like, Quite well for them. Of course, not able to kill the Alchemist, and this is going to be the big problem for them. But at least they're dealing with the other other actors. And then once Mu gets Mu gets his Shadow Blade, and once Cancel's able to like isolate the Alchemist, then maybe they can burst him down. But I think they're still going to really struggle to kill him. It's going to pretty be like it's going to make this Alchemist just.
gets his it gets his timings, and then that's like, how do they really deal with this? Because how do they really deal with an al like alchemist just throwing illusions out of the lanes of the radiance? Who really is able to just split push super hard? Spark's decent at clearing waves. So is Marana, but uh -oh. is it enough? Brett, in quite a bit of trouble here. Move could pursue, could even commit the ultimate if he wants to die for this. He's going to leap forward. Two more auto attacks to get the job done. He is going in, but he's being charged. Zai. Well, let's usher him away. Close call there for Crit, though, who desperately wants to get the relocate online. Monkey's moving here top now, working towards the flats. How do you feel about the Abaddon pick overall? Has it gotten enough done for you? Do you like the way Complexity are running it? A lot of early skirmishes, not really getting too much farm. I think they grabbed it just so they can kind of like fall off as a unit and just kind of take towers. I think this is where it's going to start to shine. He definitely struggled a bit more in the laning pit than they would have liked. But they got the tier, all three tier ones down. So and he wasn't even really there for him. So I don't really feel like he's he's like having the effect that they wanted it to. But maybe into like the later stages, just being able to shield off a couple of like open wounds, shield off the stun, shield off the charges might be better. But comparing that to a dark seer, I think the dark seer just kind of fits the suit for EG just much better than it does for the uh, Abaddon from complexity. Meanwhile, EG just not only farming on their Alchemist, but Arteezy. He's hardly been in any fights, just constantly bouncing from lane to lane. Desolator, really complete. And this will give them some... Well, this is a great smoke by Complex in here. They are going to scout out Sumail. Let's just move for now, but he's got the Night Vision advantage. Sumail has not seen him just yet move. Really play with that Night Vision. Excellent forward there, and now he makes the jump onto Sumail. Chemical Rage activated. They're still looking to chase, though. The smoke wraparound comes through right past their TZ. They're going to look to go on him. He rages off the M damage immediately. Now Z freaking into the trees, looking for the Iron Fist. Swivel is already down the fight. They might get their TZ grab. No, he's still fine! Coming in on heavy. Back to the extra service. Now the tether to keep him alive. No longer Sumail. Hiding the trees all around. Great individual play by ET. Will they make it out, though? Sumail trapped alone and dead. They still get the kill on the Alka. Now Sprint trying to escape, but they'll the TP for 10 seconds. Once an and E2 will fall. Doesn't even need the crush. Z freak. I am gonna kill. I mean, EG played that pretty cute, but it's, it's not. Yeah. It's that was a, that was a really good rotation by Complexity. Like Moo, kind of like you mentioned, he was just kind of like playing with Sumail a bit with the night vision and uh, the rotation from Complexity from the mid lane smoke. That was a very clever clever movement. Arteezy does get out, which is the one detriment them, but. Get a couple kills, which is great. And now mid lane, Arteezy might get hit by the stun. Oh, oh just... Wendell's just barely missing. Bit of... Bit of that. Oh, the EG now charging in. Z-Freak ready to interrupt the charge. Good setup there. The follow up through the brothers. Start to lay in the Zai. They want to kill this sweet boy off, and they will do so. At the same time, though, Moose Mark will fall. That's the bigger loss, for sure. A one-for-one. Like City? away. Yeah, that hurts though. Like you can feel how under the gun complexity feels in this game. They're, they really need to constantly get, keep running at them, but the Alchemist is still just getting his farm on. Even Arteezy is doing a very good job of like, just keeping his farm really far ahead. He's almost got his Desolator finished up on top of that armlet. So that's going to be their, you know, their building hitter. Instead of going for that Echo Saber this game, he just feels like they need to like, kind of just pressure towers a bit more with that. But his rage is on cooldown for five seconds. He's going to need something to do fast. Uh, or maybe a Tether to keep him alive. He can rage off the same yeah. damage of then there's the relocate out. Will they reset and try to take the fight? The wall was already committed previously by Universe. Max on cooldown, but they, they look keen to fight. Zai is charging in. Once again, he cancels the that's charge. The Alp concoction enough. Stone complexity away. Arrow not going to connect. Well, back off. Just the threat of that big team fight. We'll scare them. And So Mu, uh, after buying the Shadow Blade, does go down. 1-1-1. One, one, and one. So far, not a big impact on Slark. They're going to move into the Rochamp pit. And they take a big fight here, though, Yachty. So you mentioned that their team fight isn't the strongest. They still don't have the Ags here. EG came. It could be a dire situation, but it doesn't appear EG know, or at least they want to risk it. Yeah, without the wall down, I mean, they are going to be there. It's a little bit hard to fight into uh, Cole's lineup just in that like in that segment without that uh, that sense. And also, Zai's having a pretty rough game. He's he's got just level seven. No items really on him. The Wisp as well. Just boots bottle. It's all right. They'll feed him in agonims later. Yeah, that'll be the nice thing too. That's the great thing about having this alchemist, and it's that's the strategy that they're going for. You know, when you pick an elf, that's kind of what you know what you're getting into. He's just gonna run around farm and really a lot on Sumail and Arteezy this game in comparison to everybody else on the side of EG. The universe, you know, he's gonna get his job done. This is a universe dark seer. God, imagine the universe dark seer with seven item slots. <laughs> that's pretty scary. Yeah. Top lane, Seed Freak. Looks like it might be his demise here. 
side with the charge and the crush attempt by Z3, somebody get it off the time and with uh, to do so, he will definitely die. He's even being relocated into the frame. Monkeys is there, and Artis is giving a bit of chase. Artis going to the open wounds. Backing off. As mentioned, did go for the Desolator. They're going to relocate back to the mid lane. Crit drops them off. Taxi done its job for the day. Yeah, that was like a did get a lane before our exactly. jungle ward down the wall. That was all happening. That was like a nice little moving, nice little double moving by them. They net a kill and they get the vision down, but Mu is aware of it, pinging out on the height. They're kind of around the area, but he didn't find it exactly. If Squindle's able to find it with the second sentry, and he is. That, that is definitely crucial with the Slark. I'm, you're dealing with an IO, right? You, you, you mentioned also there's the Infest Bomb, there's the Long Range Charge, the really four heroes can show up. You have BOTs and out, maybe all five can even come. You need to make sure you keep the vision advantage, and that's where the Slark really comes in handy. Big question to me is, is this enough? And I still don't think it is. This Alchemist is still just farming out of control, it's getting close to his Manta style, and that's when it's just kind of become like almost impossible because they don't really have anything that can just like, like just like okay, Mirada and Slark can kind of force the lanes out, but then who's their hunter? They need this blink on Z Freak in order to really be able to go for those uh, access points of killing Sumail with like a couple different rotations because they need to bring like three heroes actually to kill that Alchemist and make sure that the EG is not really in the area. EG are actually up almost five, actually over 5,000 gold, and they're down two towers. So, uh, we imagine at some point the tower score is going to equalize. Suddenly they're up closing in on like seven, 8,000 gold, and you really have 10k advantage with the Alps straight up farming. By the time they get those towers, it could well be the case. So, this is where. It doesn't feel like they're getting enough. Yeah. yeah, this is where they get a good amount more map control on the side of EG. Match style finished. He's just going to be able to throw illusions, up creep waves, or planes out. Right now, bottom lane. Alright, for the relocate, not gonna work out, and now the chase on the Zion. They end the monkey's gonna charge away, and it will bash Z3 because he tries to get in range. Straight on towards mid, and I imagine will be cancelled. At some point there's a leap into an arrow, but arrow... Flip. This is where Space it's... created. Sumail farming the enemy woods, universe farming top. Yeah, they should give Z3 a good place to farm. Just finish up that blink, he's so close. Definitely, definitely gives them a big, opens up a big option for them be able to get the, uh, get, like, kill everybody else even, like, they can just ignore the out for a bit and just keep fragging and then get to the point where they can deal with him, but, so, de definitely very difficult to go for him. With, like, enough items, it does feel like they have that opportunity, and Zai's gonna charge in direct down the swindle with the offense bomb, unloads Arteezy, the turn comes so quickly, Zai will be brought down, Arteezy to back away, so, support for a support, and unfortunately, they're breaker down again. Gee, another death for him, but I, I guess, like we talked about, he has the comeback mechanism with the Ags, and that is not available to the side. He is trading, trading deaths for Swindles. Secret strategy for EG, put Swindles on tilt. <laughs> yeah, Swindles kind of doing his job, though. Like, he's, been, he's been pretty good at uh, like following around the rotations, getting the stuns off with, uh, with, his, with his brother Z-Freak. And now this is, uh, this is uh, the timing now. He got the blink dagger of honor, maybe a little bit later than he wanted, but... He opens up the map a little bit to them with that Slark running around with the Shadow Blade. So I imagine we'll, we will see the Octarine next for Sumel. Yeah. We really need some armor items or the, the Slark are going late game. Yeah, definitely like, just like the kind of the standard, right? The Octarine into Shiva's guard. It's usually what we just see picked up. Move, going for a solo pickup on Thresh. His buff, nobody's near him. He's actually completely alone. He's got the Aegis, he's got Shadow Dance. He realized there were other people here, and now Moo in a lot of trouble. He's going to commit the ultimate, tries to run away Shadow Dancing out. Bouncing as well, he does have the Aegis. They can reset around him, go for a round two fight. Only if he gets in position first, the arrow crashes in. Can he connect to Marteze while he's raging? So doesn't get much done. Deep going to likely die here on three. They get four hero charged by his side, who delivers in space. Who there to turn this one, though? He continues to get still hold the Aegis. The crush comes through on his three. Great job. Can they focus on Universe? They will do. And suddenly, Cancel arrives. They get a two for two. So EG on the round side scramble. Now, Marteze, though, getting the job done for now. Takes the habit on with him, at least. And now it's the three. They engage a two hero stun from Sumail, but instantly Dark Pack's off. Moo's going to try to bring him down, but just very slow. Ineffective poking the Aegis, I believe, expired during this time. Now he's gonna pass out. He tries to run, unable to pursue over the tree limit to get the charge. Zai's coming in, hot and heavy shadow blades there. Oh, so close to dying. He wants to go back in. Moon's gonna come in for this. He gets the kill. Can he jump down? He's back to get the big concoction. Takes him down. What is it worth it? They got, they got our TCD. You know, it's a, it was a four for four trade, but like, like we're saying, this is the Alchemist's power. They really he don't have anything to do. Oh, and he's gonna get a free kill on Swindle here. 
Oh no, goodbye smokers. One, two. Cash money. Take like a creep. Casual farm right there. Yeesh. That's like I mean that's the thing to keep in mind, right? It's like Alp didn't even really get damaged that entire fight. And they had an Aegis, although I believe it expired mid-fight. Yeah, yeah it definitely, it definitely unfortunate for them losing that. Mu would have lived at least in the end of that, and it would have been like a pretty decent trade for her, but the problem is now Boy Alchemist has his Octarine. And now, you know, like you said, he wasn't even scratched at all in that last team fight. How are they gonna really deal with him now? They, they don't have anything they to deal with. Don't have the best single target until White late when Slark is really farmed. Yeah, like cancel because cancel can do a good amount of burst, obviously with a double starfall. And once you get this obviously once you get the Ethereum blade on top of that, he has a good amount of single burst, but an alchemist can kinda of deal with that, especially at this point. Twenty five hundred life when he has his armor on top of chemical range. Not to mention they have they have an IO as well. Nice yeah. pick up the courier might like, cancel, but can he make it out? Due to bit. Team sweeping in to engage and out crit, tethering his way back towards safety, but Moose still they're gonna get the F damage. Spirit's actually hitting Moo, and that immediately prompts the Flurry of Pains and the Sentry Plant. They know that someone's in the area. Barely build up. Scrap the other D ward. So now it's bad. Did go for the Bastion. This is, I think this is just the build that he does. He likes to go for the, the Vlad is kind of like the standard, the Bastion. I think it's like they need a little bit more lockdown, more reliable through the rage, especially. Hurts of Avernus, you know, you get that little bit of attack speed. It gives him a, I guess, like a scaling potential as well, in kind of a way. But... And then, in long fights, I suppose, gives them a way to potentially lock down a life stealer uh, with the rage maybe. Yeah. Not sure how much auto attack he's going to be doing, to be honest. Exactly. I mean, it's this alchemist is a massive problem. We we keep saying it, we keep talking. That's what it's that's what it is when you pick an alchemist last. Game. It's the whole emphasis of the draft, and he just passed the 1,000 GPM. So, uh, guys, you remember your predictions for your compendiums? He has now reached the 1,000, so if you didn't put that, tough luck. Yeah, if you thought EG would stop picking Alchemist after the many disastrous Alchemist performances they've had so far. Mm -hmm. I don't pull off that IO, but... Crit, pesky as ever. Just gonna be away. I haven't really seen much out of the Slark, to be honest, Giannis. He was given an Aegis. It's 5, 2, and 3 now, but still nowhere near shutting down. The Alchemist, the supports are struggling, but they can catch up at least one of them quite a bit later with the Agon of Setter. And, I mean, frankly, like, they're they're not stopping the cores really from farming that much at all. Which is, to the bigger concern. Yeah, I mean, they, they can kill off the supports, they can kill off everybody from the side of EG, but yeah, it's the Alchemist who is the big problem. They need to pretty much kill everybody and then isolate him, and then it's it's still pretty tough for them to actually bring him down. It's like, everybody needs to kind of just be focusing on him. It's, it still might not even be enough because of how far he really is. Like, you kind of have the Shiva's already finished up, too. The yeah, good news is, he's running out of it. There's a silver lining that's probably it. Uh, I think we mentioned that he canceled to get the eggs a while ago, and into the blink dagger, now back for the shotgun. And late game Murana with a full 6-7 like, slot kit, that is a lot of potential single target, either going back into physical damage with the slaughter amp to back you up, or just even doubling down and going for that they got 5 kill. but either way, those have plenty of room to scale. I guess that's that's my question, is do you think Complexity can drag this out, like, and if it goes super late, do they then have the advantage? It, it definitely is potential. They make it to a super late point just because of the options of their heroes. They can kind of like weave in and, in and out of the fights over and over, and that could be their potential to be uh, un under farm uh, most of the heroes on EGR. So maybe there's a potential of like a super late game for them. But right now it's you know it's, it's definitely way too hard. EG's for them to job like not to let them even get there. Yeah. Not like be too much and then be able to just get Aegis and break break all the towers and claim map control at least with this Alchemist. But yeah, definitely have like a super late game potential. Complexity can weave in and out of the fights and clean up everybody and isolate the alchemists in a way. That's that's quite a ways away from now. Well, you're gonna replace that Iron Talon. Does have the, the Shivas as you mentioned. So really only a mood shards that he could grab or maybe trade something out for like an AC and get rid of that armlet potentially. Yeah. More than likely get rid of that armlet and grab something. I, I'm not sure if the yeah, AC could be pretty easy just to break high ground, but I think RTZ would be more than likely. Oh, that was a quick two shot. This left track is not feeling like a hero anymore. ZG chase in. Confident to move forward. Z Creek does have a crush ready. Could be a 3 4 hero crush. He's just gonna flop out an amp damage. Zumal immediately starts sprinting after him. They're gonna jump away and 
be now ripping up the concoction. I'm not gonna find anyone to latch onto with this. It looks like it's a good self stun. They did see that uh, coming in. Oh, he oh, just misses the Dark Seer. They did see the Z Freak didn't port back into there though, so that's a big tell. Like when he charged him, it didn't show him in base, it showed him at that tier one tower bottom. So they're like, okay, Flexi's definitely trying to still just fight in the area, so they just they all just kind of chill there too. Outside of EG. A lot of dancing. Unfortunately, this means Slark not farming, whereas Alchemist with his illusions constantly. EC finished up now on uh, RTZ. And uh, Sumail's already on his way toward that first Aghanim for either Universe or Zai. Shotgun, meanwhile, completed for the Marana, and it gets, it gets Io. This is a, basically an instant kill if they can find Fred. Even the, even the Spirit Breaker, the Dark Seer, will come pretty close to dying, and they want a pipe to deal with this Universe trying to work on one. It's still going to be a while before the full pipe is completed, so a decent window here from Marana at the big impact is Sumail. Impressively sieging this tower goes for a quick, short duration stun on Z-Freak. Z-Freak can change the sprint. Back away, Monkey's there to help him. Meanwhile's eye charging in. It's gonna isolate Hansel, tries to bring him down, and we like Shadow. Already committed, but he leaps out into a beautiful bank. And Universe able to interrupt that one. Can they focus him down? Defensive goes up here, trying to escape, heading to the right instead. He's gonna live for now. Hansel not taking but the illusion burst might take him down. Right there with the charge, we'll finish while three have fallen. About to be a fourth Monkey's forever. Already committed his all. And now, by the way, it's still a full health. Or quite they, they do get the eye open. Yeah, they, they, can't, they can't deal with this out at all. They even tried to go for some like cute wrap around with some flexi, but there's just no way they can kill him. Okay, there's actually no way. No. And this is their, this is the timing window for EJ. They've got the AC finished up on our TZ, they've got a six slotted Alchemist. This is where they can just see the base and close this game out for sure. It is not keeping up the items. Out net worth more than Mirana and Slark combined to say nothing of their other course, still doing quite well in their own right. That they mow down the melee racks, the range bottom. I mean, game looking quite close to over Yanni. So heading into game two, what kind of adjustments do you want to make in your complexity? It's just the way they landed, it, is it more down to the kicks? Where do you tend to spawn? This is like Alchemist versus the world, kind of in a way. There's actually no, they just can't deal with him at all. I, I mean, they, they banned the Storm last ban, which is definitely a good ban because they didn't have any lockdown really for him. So you can't really blame them for doing that, but what's worse, right? And what's worse is, uh, destroying you with lights. All the while. Quick they're gonna find Swim Bills here momentarily. Tries for a few seconds to close up, but it's a fleeting effort by him, and he will go down. Meanwhile, Monkey's up. Yeah, this is pretty much the end. Like, Slark, the fact that when you third pick the Slark, especially, that you're putting yourself in a position where they can kind of just beat the hero and ramp up in a faster manner. That's exactly what Alchemist does. He farms at a five fold rate, five fold rate over a Slark, and the Slark is able to just get non stop pick, non stop pick off. But that's not gonna happen. Sumail just, yeah, he just feels, he can just run it. He just doesn't care. Yeah, he already gave someone an X, I didn't actually get Gave it to the universe, yeah. I, you can't really blame him like, see, for not game planning for the out though, because it's looked so bad for EG for the last like month. I don't, I don't know if that's really that's good. It's amazing though, not like. I mean, I love it's the last pick Alchemist. So I, I really love the fact it. that they're they're still running it, but like if I'm complex it, I'm not really expecting EG would want to run out. You know? Yeah. Hey, that's where they get you, and I, I like the fact that EG is being stubborn and not not just giving up on it because it, it keeps their drafting options open heading into the, the main event. You know, with the format we have for this event, it feels like this group stage is almost, if not more, about mind games and kind of setting the stage for drafts in that main event. It's at least, if it's not only about that, it's definitely more so about that. I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if, if you want to be a tier one team in any manner, you have to build like, like, play off of this event. I mean, the hero is pretty ridiculous, especially at the last bit, but like, you can see how the damage potential that he just does. Like, he's on killable. He, okay, he died once when he wasn't online at all, but now he's completely online. And, like he's just fighting. Not even just an uphill battle. It's like a bump up a mountain. They're trying to scale the wrong side of the map for this. This is just not looking great. So you're mad killing off swing on the one side of the map, basically. That's right, just a big bucket of gold for them. It's canceled, just really trying to bring down crit. Arrow, though, could be tanked by Zai. That is a sign of friendship here. That's who will be next, but it's down by Sumail Maul, but Spirit Breaker and karate chop by the phone head. Kill them all. Okay. Whoa! We'll get the RTZ kill. The tears will flow from him, but PG overall. 
looking pretty solid. But still a full HP option. It's basically a killable. And along with the concoction, back you can combo with them. Nice two hero cats and sneak it. Four, sneak five, complexity at some point. This is just that similar route. Yeah, it, I think they're just like, they're probably just like thinking about the next game already. Like, yeah, we should probably just ban their fourth alchemist. Not we won't have to deal with something like that. I actually or don't. Maybe run it. Or maybe run it. Or maybe even run it. You can see them run. Uh, I think they they, they definitely run. I can't look at play. He plays in pubs. His big three, I think, are like alchemist would be and Piranha. I think those are the ones. But, yeah, you just look at the core pair off from EG compared to. You can kind of like feel that that's like, kind of dictated the way the game was going to go with us. Somehow Complexity super snowballed in a way, but... They, they run, they run Meepo, but like Complexity, I don't think they... No, they don't have a Meepo player. Cause that's...